Welcome back. Now that we've discussed um, the playwright Menander, we're going to spend a bit of uh, more time talking about um, new comedy, uh, which by now uh, um, you, you have seen in Menander, is substantially different from the old comedy that we now have left behind uh, with the plays of Aristophanes. So uh, we're going to uh, put together uh, what new comedy um, produces for us, uh, how it um, is uh, different in many particular ways from old comedy, and um, what that reflects about uh, the world of Athens uh, in its day. <clears throat> so first of all, new comedy, um, as with its predecessor, old comedy, um, was pre still produced uh, at the Lodaya and the uh, City Dionysia festivals, as we saw before, and still has the same kind of um, uh, a, a, a fest festival emphasis on competition uh, with the effort to uh, win prizes. So Menander himself, uh, who apparently wrote over 100 plays, as we talked about uh, in the bio video on Menander, uh, ended up winning um, first place uh, eight times, but apparently that was considered um, relatively successful for a playwright. Uh, he was in fact celebrated as uh, one of the most successful uh, new comedy uh, uh, playwrights of his day. Um, because uh, tastes have changed quite a bit uh, in Athens, uh, we no longer have all the lewd stuff that goes on with Aristophanes. We no longer have the leather phallus or all that other stuff. Instead, we really now are talking uh, much more realistically about um, people as they in fact are. So as we have down here, uh, family-related crises, not all of the really crazy outlandish stuff that we have with uh, the frogs down in the underworld, the birds building a city up in the clouds, all that's now gone. We're now talking much more particularly about uh, what goes on in just everyday life uh, and, and uh, other type, types of uh, various uh, crises uh, that can happen uh, as one just go, goes about one's, one's normal day-to-day uh, -day business. Now, new comedy, in fact, uh, is a development um, from, somewhat from old comedy, but actually from middle comedy that, as its name suggests, uh, does precede new comedy, but comes after old comedy. So if you think of old comedy as dating from 5th century BC Athens, as we talked about in that video way back uh, regarding old comedy, then new comedy should be thought of as uh, coming from um, the f later 4th century BC, which as you saw with Menander is about the, around the time that he wrote. So, of course, where's middle comedy in between? Middle comedy dates for us in the first part of the 400s, uh, 4th, 4th century BC, so the early 300s BC. And in fact, the last two plays of Aristophanes we have called Ecclesia Zeusai, or the Assembly Women, and the Plutus, the Wealth, are both... Um, examples uh, a little bit of what we can see in the transition period from old comedy to middle comedy. What we now see with middle comedy in particular is um, much less reliance on the chorus, although the chorus is still there um, uh, usually in the opening acts. Usually the chorus, uh, if it's there at all, just simply uh, does some um, uh, dance routines. It might speak a little bit uh, to the audience, but the chorus is much uh, more removed from the plot uh, than any of the choruses we see in, in uh, earlier uh, old comedy. Um, in addition, uh, the structure is quite a bit, starting to, to change quite a bit. Um, there is quite a bit more uh, interaction with the, the, uh, the, uh, the characters themselves, um, but um, there is very little specific interaction with the audience. Since the chorus is not really all that involved uh, in the play, there's really little uh, uh, audience participation whatsoever. No parabasis, for instance, uh, with the character addressing the audience directly. That does not happen much in middle comedy. And from what we can see um, from uh, leftover vestiges in middle comedy, many of the um, plots appear to have been uh, focused on specific stock characters. So like, for instance, the cook uh, or the beggar uh, or um, the braggart leader or someone, uh, 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 some other type of, of um, familiar personage one can imagine. And the name Machias, M-A-C-C-I-U-S, apparently was used quite a bit uh, to, uh, Machias, excuse me, was used to um, name uh, the, the, the comic hero of these uh, middle comedies. So what we start uh, seeing is a gradual transition from the fantastic plot, which is still there a little bit with those last two plots of Aristophanes, uh, into a more generic kind of um, uh, even-handed, somewhat washed-out uh, version of comedy, where, whereby now we're talking about um, 
the uh, a particular character who, who almost like like a clown in the circus represents a particular type and essentially goes out there uh, uh, to uh, tell us a, a familiar type of story based on uh, that particular uh, t type of character. So uh, middle comedy, as I say, is is evolving out of old comedy and, and eliminating a lot of the particular political or topical references that old comedy has. But it, it, it really takes until we get down to new comedy in particular that we see um, the full development of, of uh, the, this, this um, later form of comedy that Menander represents. So with new comedy now, although the chorus is there, the chorus has been completely eliminated from uh, even really speaking and definitely no longer interacting with the characters. All the chorus does now is to dance. Uh, if you imagine the, the halftime uh, show at the Super Bowl, for instance, uh, all the chorus does is dance at the points when the acts um, end and then begin. There are, in fact, five acts all together in a typical new comedy. You could, you'll find that when you read um, or, or, or already should have seen uh, for uh, Menander's Discalus. And that's where the chorus does. And that's really all that happens uh, with, with the chorus. There's very little else. So there are some uh, elements of old comedy uh, in, the, in the actual production itself. For instance, there's still a prologue. The god Pan, you saw, we'll, we'll see in Menander's Discalus, is uh, the, the one who delivers the prologue there. But otherwise, it's all pr uh, pretty much um, based on the characters themselves. In order to involve the uh, audience somewhat, there are quite a few asides that are made uh, particularly to the audience. Um, of our remaining three playwrights, the one who, uh, who has the most of that uh, is the Roman playwright Plautus, the last one that we're going to read in the course. Um, Menander and Terence do that to some extent, but uh, not, as, not, not as much as uh, Plautus does. Um, but the, the, where it happens, the metatheatrical um, uh, asides to the audience uh, take the place of the um, audience participation that would have happened with, uh, with the chorus itself um, in uh, an old comedy. So that's set up with the five acts, uh, and again, the stripping away of, of the, uh, the choral role um, in, in comedy is, is what's going to distinguish uh, new comedy as far as uh, production. All right, so the plot. Um, in the days of um, Athens, after its, its great uh, democracy in the later uh, uh, 300s BC, there is very little room for any kind of political topical reference. This is not the same Athens that we knew back in the 5th century BC, uh, what some might, might say, unfortunately. In this period, um, Athens um, no longer has the full democracy that it had through the 6th, 5th, 4th centuries BC, um, and therefore does not have the kind of, of populace and the kind of government that will have a sense of humor uh, to make the, the particular references. So where we had the full democracy in the 5th century BC, that gradually erodes in, in the course of the 4th century BC, as we'll talk about in our later historical videos. Um, Athens just doesn't have it anymore. Uh, it, it, it's still a powerful polis, and it even still has a fleet and has a network of allies at one time. Um, but it just doesn't uh, command uh, nearly as much uh, power and authority as it, as it, as it did previously. Um, all of Greece is transformed quite drastically by the intervention of Macedonia. Um, in 338 and then the, the later on the 320s uh, BC as first Philip and then his rather famous son Alexander, yes, Alexander the Great, both um, uh, make their way from Macedonia down into Greece and end up um, taking over the leagues and incorporating them into Macedonia. So by the time Menander is writing, uh, Athens is more, more commonly under uh, the power of a Macedonian regent then um, is, is standing with its own democracy. So under that kind of, uh, of power, uh, comedy has to take a back seat away from politics and has to become uh, a lot safer in its choice of uh, topics. So as we said, family crises will dominate. It's very similar to a, a typical sitcom. Um, the whole uh, crisis involving uh, the Grouch's daughter who isn't getting married properly, this rich young man who comes in from another family who is very interested in marrying her, but has to cut the mustard with the father by uh, working out in the field, as well as also the, um, the, the son and, and the slaves. Uh, all, all, all these uh, social interactions, uh, the, the mixture of um, social castes, the way that the, the slave can show up the master and such, all of that is what's going to uh, now make uh, for uh, the plot of, of, of new comedy. So again, uh, the, the, the local references will not occur.
New comedy uh, generally is going to be uh, a set in a specific uh, city. It's usually Athens, uh, but it can sometimes be eastern cities such as Ephesus. That in itself is interesting. It, it does um, uh, reflect the increasingly cosmopolitan uh, nature of uh, Greece in um, uh, the days after the Macedonian takeover, uh, that many more cities now become a lot more um, cultured and involved with literature and the arts. Alexandria itself, of course, was one of the major ones, as was Pergamum over in uh, Asia Minor, uh, but quite a few other cities as well in Egypt, uh, uh, we mentioned, and also in, on Sicily um, and many other locations. So, uh, so the, again, this is a very different world from the Paulus-based world of the 6th and 5th centuries BC. And so in this type of world, the, uh, there was probably a need for comedy to be a lot easier to produce. We couldn't rely on the big choral training uh, sessions that we had before. So the comedy has to be a lot easier to transmit from one part of the Greek world to another. And that could be another reason why uh, the uh, plays become a lot um, uh, more familiar and, and fairly repetitious in the, in the way that they carry on their plots. So um, because of this, um, it, it was going to be Greek new comedy rather than old comedy that will eventually influence the Romans. So the Romans um, are going to start uh, becoming uh, involved in Greek affairs in, and finally in a big way, um, starting in about the uh, 200s uh, BC. The Romans and the Greeks probably interacted long before that, but uh, the Romans do not appear to have uh, been interested in liter literary production, especially until uh, the mid uh, 200s BC, and that uh, may possibly have been partly uh, generated by the Romans' conflict with Carthage, which, as it turned out, would bring them into direct conflict with both Macedonia and uh, Greece. So as the Romans uh, became uh, more familiar with Greek culture, they be began to realize that they themselves had a lot of social uh, lacks um, in their society, as well as uh, uh, their, their capacity for the production of, of great works of, of literature, art, music, and so forth. So as the Romans became more familiar with Greek culture, they brought it over and were able to adopt most of it into um, forms appropriate for themselves, of course, written in Latin uh, more, more frequently than Greek, although even Greek was not entirely um, unheard of. Um, and uh, it's th those comedies that we will see um, uh, produced with uh, Plautus and Terence in particular. And uh, when we turn to those playwrights, uh, we will um, speak more about uh, how what Roman comedy was like and how it compares with uh, ancient uh, Greek new comedy. But again, uh, as you take away for, for this video, you should realize that Greek new comedy is focused now squarely on a particular uh, familiar um, home setting type of of crisis that comes up uh, that gets everybody all up into a tizzy, into a broil, and then eventually is able comically uh, to work itself out by some type of re reasonably uh, convenient means of getting everybody to, uh, who, is a, who deserves to uh, have what's coming to them exactly what in fact is coming to them. Um, a man and a woman are usually involved. They're, tr they're separated in some way. They need to come together. Often it's a social problem. Sometimes it's a more practical problem like money, like if, like if the woman has been purchased by um, a uh, braggart general. You'll see that soon. Um, and so on. So often that's at the, the basis of uh, the, um, the comedy. Um, in, in some cases, a baby may have been born rather awkwardly at the wrong time, uh, too long a, 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 a birth period, and so on. And so that can sometimes also uh, get uh, introduced into the picture and can cause a great deal of, of uh, mayhem uh, for uh, the families involved. So all of that is what uh, Greek new comedy represents. Okay, so from here we'll be uh, uh, continuing on with um, uh, Athenian and Greek history, and then we'll be gradually transitioning our way into uh, Roman comedy and uh, the Roman historical and literary world. We'll see you next video.